Hello. My goal in this video is to go over the main endocrine organs in the body and a little bit about how they work. Color coding is going to be very important on this page because I'm going to give you the names of lots of organs and I'm going to give you the names of lots of hormones and a lot of information about how they work. So let's use blue whenever we're going to talk about um, the name of an endocrine organ. We'll start out with the pituitary gland. So right here This is the anterior pituitary gland. That means it's the part that's facing the front of your body. The pituitary gland is often called the master gland because it makes so many hormones that regulate other organs. In fact, it makes seven different ones, the anterior part does. And then the, the posterior part, which we'll talk about in a minute, releases a couple others. Okay, so now we're going to use pink for the name of the hormone. The first one is adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, and it targets the adrenal gland and causes the adrenal gland to release steroid hormones. And on another page of your notes, we'll talk more about those specific steroid hormones, aldosterone, cortisone, and testosterone. Since adrenocorticotropic hormone causes the adrenal gland to release steroid hormones, you can see that the target of ACTH is the adrenal gland. And what we mean by that is the adrenal gland must have receptors on it that can bind to ACTH and then be stimulated by it. So the way a hormone can work is by binding to a receptor on a cell. It can only affect cells that have a receptor for it. It's kind of like how a neuron can only stimulate another neuron or a target if that target or other neuron has receptors to bind it, to bind to the neurotransmitters. Okay, so then the next one, going back to our pink, and we could actually number these because there are seven. A follicle stimulating hormone. And I'm gonna put three right along with it. Luteinizing hormone. These are reproductive hormones that target the ovaries and testes. They cause the ovaries or testes to produce steroid hormones. Estrogen in the case of um, ovaries and testosterone in the case of the testes, and then the interplay of those hormones also causes the maturation of sperm and eggs. Okay, next up, get your pink again. Thyroid stimulating hormone. or TSH, 
Oh, I guess I forgot to give you acronyms here. There's always an acronym for the endocrine system, it seems like. Acronym, acronym, acronym. Okay, so thyroid stimulating hormone is going to target the thyroid gland. So what that means is that the thyroid gland has receptors that can bind to this hormone and other organs don't. And the effect is causes the thyroid gland to produce more thyroxine. I should even put more to produce thyroxine, um, which is another hormone. And then that hormone will eventually affect the metabolism of different organs. Okay, next up, number five, growth hormone. Now this hormone can find receptors on pretty much every cell in the body. And the effect that it has on all of those cells is repair and growth. So when we're a child, then that's a really important job of growth hormone is to help us get taller and get bigger muscles. And throughout our life, it's important in stimulating repair of damages to cells and muscles. Okay, next up, so get your pink again. Prolactin. PRL, I know there's an acronym for every one of these. What this one is really important at is targeting the mammary glands and causing them to produce milk. Prolactin has many effects in our brain too. And to be perfectly honest, I think that there are effects of these that have not yet been elucidated. We don't really know all of what prolactin is doing. For example, men make prolactin, but in a healthy situation, they are not producing milk. And then the last hormone from the anterior pituitary gland is melanocyte stimulating hormone. Or MSH. And it very specifically targets our melanocytes. Those are found in our skin and helps them to produce pigment. Melanoma is a kind of cancer in which melanocytes are dividing too much and also with some abnormalities in them. Okay, so um, these seven hormones come out of the pituitary gland, which is located in your brain. And then the back side of the pituitary gland is called the posterior pituitary gland. Highlight that in pink right there. But use another blue arrow and this is the posterior pituitary gland. We'll write about it way over on this side of the page. Posterior pituitary gland. Okay, and it releases two hormones that are actually made in the hypothalamus but released from the pituitary gland. So let's see, we need our green for the target. Oh, sorry, first a pink for the name. So the first hormone is called antidiuretic hormone. You can kind of tell in its name what it's gonna do, right? It's going to work against diuresis, which is urination. So antidiuretic hormone, ADH, helps us conserve water. And it does that by targeting the kidneys and it causes them to reabsorb more water.
and in times of stress, this helps us to um, raise our blood pressure, or if we just don't have enough water around, it can help us to keep from getting as dehydrated as we might otherwise get. <clears throat> so this can either increase blood pressure or reduce dehydration. Okay, and then the second hormone that's released from the posterior pituitary gland is oxytocin. Oxytocin is another interesting hormone that um, is released in men, but when I first tell you its function, you might be surprised because it has, it has receptors on the uterus and the mammary glands, but also in the brain, and it causes uh, the simplistic ex ex explanation is that it causes the mammary glands to release milk, or so we call that milk ejection or milk letdown. So when the baby suckles, then there's uh, then there's a, a signal that goes from the nipple up to the brain. Oxytocin is released, and then oxytocin causes the mammary gland to let the milk out of the ducts, and then the baby can get milk only when it needs to, and the woman should not be leaking all the time. It can take a, few, a month or so for that to get all worked out with a new mother, but ultimately it is a good way to conserve the milk, right? So she's not losing it unless the baby needs it, and the baby gets just the amount that it needs. It also is important for uterine contractions, and this is really important after the baby is born. Whenever the baby suckles, then the uterus will contract and it helps the uterus to return to its normal size. It also happens, this is what causes labor to progress. The uterine contractions get stronger and stronger and more and more oxytocin is released, causing more and more strong contractions. Here's the other cool thing though. In the brain, we see that oxytocin is associated with bonding. And interestingly, oxytocin is released during orgasm too and may also be associated with the bonding that can occur um, in a sexual relationship. Oh, it also, along with bonding, causes great relaxation. And this um, seems to be helpful to new mothers um, the, when they're breastfeeding, then they might, they might have a sense of well-being that is believed to have some relationship to the release of oxytocin during that breastfeeding. Okay, so complicated hormone. We don't know all of what it does, that's for sure. And let's talk a little more about another um, part of this system that controls the pituitary gland is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, of course, part of the brain, part of the diencephalon, and the hypothalamus is what controls the pituitary gland. So right here, you can use a black pen, and I highlighted this in green. The hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland. I'll just put PG for pituitary gland. So what this means is since the hypothalamus is part of our limbic system, if we are emotionally uh, upset, if we're angry, if we're having any kind of strong emotions, that can affect all of these hormones and how they're working in our body. So there is definitely a mind-body connection when it comes to the functioning of the pituitary gland. In fact, you might have even heard of people that um, when they are very stressed out have trouble uh, getting pregnant. And you can see that maybe follicle stimulating hormone, maybe luteinizing hormone could be disturbed during times of great stress. Okay, so we're going to do one more um, organ in this video and then I'm going to go to a part two. So this cute little organ right here, or it's actually a gland, sorry. Um, looks like the ear, but it's actually meant to be the pineal gland in the brain. We can just maybe write this right here. Some people call it the pineal gland. That's probably the correct pronunciation. 
and this gland makes one, it's also, it's, by the way, this is found in the epithalamus of the brain. So let's see, pink for, I put blue for the name, pineal gland, and then pink for the hormone, and we'll put melatonin, and then green for the function. So melatonin is released from the pineal gland in the dark, and it causes us to become sleepy. Okay, good. So we'll come back for part two of endocrine organs in the next video.